Means as we're in the uh, we're in the season of praise all summer long, we're going to be talking about praise. So at all locations, on the count of three, we're going to thank the Lord. Do I just want to say that we just want everybody in the building and it, here at Westport and Weldon and North just to say thank you, Lord, on three. So let's do that together. One, two, three. Thank you, Lord. All right, you may be seated, everybody. I got some scripture I want to share with you. It's out of Psalm 33, verse one through three, and. Um, and, I, and I'll talk about this a little bit, then we'll take up the offering, and we're going to be in Hebrews 13 today. And if you know anybody that needs a breakthrough, this would be a message that I would text them or, or get on social media and, and let them know they need to hear this message. This is a really, really uh, good word from the Lord for you. It says, Shout for joy in the Lord, O you righteous. Righteous meaning those who are born again. If you've been born again by the blood of Jesus, you're a righteous person. Praise befits the upright. Give thanks to the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp and ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Say new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. So shout real quick and I'll tell you a story. One, two, three, shout. All right, that's good enough. Stop. That sounded horrible. Stop. Uh, here, here's, what, here's what I want to do. So uh, the other day, I want to tell you about playing skillfully. The other day... Um, I told my wife, I said, I'm going to go to the farm, I said, uh, and uh, I'm going to spend the night, I'm going to ride my horse, read the Bible, and I'm going to play my guitar and sing to the Lord. Now, you guys didn't know that I played a guitar, did you? And I, and I don't, I don't play guitar. <laughs> but I ordered one off, uh, off the internet, uh, a Keith Urban guitar, and some of you guys ordered a, a Keith Urban guitar before. So what I did is, is I got that done. Uh, read my Bible, and the next thing before I went to bed, I was going to praise the Lord. I was going to play my guitar and praise the Lord. And it was just me and my dog there at the farm. Sounds like a country song, doesn't it? So listen, I sat there, I started to pray, play my guitar, and I don't know how to play it. And my dog ran in the other room. <laughs> it's a true story. He ran in the other room, totally ran in the other room. And, um, and I just played anyways. Because it's something I told the Lord I wanted to do. I've never done that before. Um, and, and I played as skillfully as I knew how and sang to the Lord because that's what I told God I was going to do. I don't know if you guys have ever struck up a deal with God, uh, but he'll hold his end of the bargain up. It's your job to hold it's, it's your job to hold up your end of the bargain. So if you struck up a deal with God, it's your job to keep your end of the bargain. Is anybody listening to this today? So let's, let's pray we'll, uh, for the, uh, the tithes and the offerings, and then we'll get into the message. So, Lord, we pray for all the things everybody's trying to do, Lord. You know, there's, it's summer, it's busy, and you know that. And we love you, Lord. Help us uh, um, get out of busyness and get into you. And we pray that the power of the Holy Ghost would overshadow the, the sanctuary here and at uh, Westport, you know, Weldon, and North. And uh, the offering would be multiplied, that people would give, um, Lord, and, and when that hits the offering bucket, Lord God, I play, uh, pray that they're, they're cheerful about it uh, as they're given to your kingdom. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. One more shout to the Lord and turn with me in Hebrews 13. Let the offering be picked up, thank you. So Hebrews 13, um, so today it... It's all about praise all summer long, so you guys will know if your friends go, hey, what are you guys doing at church this summer? Reverend, just tell them we're praising the Lord. It, it keeps it real simple. It's not, it's not real confusing. It's not a, a, a hard message to understand. It's about praise. Don't wait any longer. I'm just going to say this before I get into the message. Don't wait any longer to praise God. Praise God now. The victory will follow. Praise God now, and the victory will follow. And that's biblical. You look up anything that, that was going on in the Old Testament and things when all the wars were going on, Lori, there was always a praise team out front, then the victory followed. And, and call me if you need some stories of victory. I can give you a, a gazillion of them in the Bible. Well, all the stories in the Bible are about victory. Can I be honest with you? It, are we at the right place? You guys look like you're just kind of drink some more coffee and get full of the Holy Ghost while you're at it. Um, yeah, so Hebrews 13, so here it is. It says, let brotherly love continue. Let brotherly love continue. But, Pastor, you don't know what they said to me. You don't know what they did to me. You don't know how bad I got it. 
woe is me. Here's the deal. Can I, can I get in your Kool-Aid for a second? Here, here's the deal. I, I learned a message about grace and, and, and how to be thankful from my friend, Miss Wanda, Anita's mom. You know she passed away recently, and I'll be doing a homecoming service for her here. Reverend, she's, was, she was paralyzed from the neck down. Look at me, kids. She was paralyzed from the neck down for 30 years. And Anita's right there. That's her mom, her mom. Uh, what, a, what a picture of grace. She never complained about a hangnail. Never complained about her foot or her toe or her head or her eye or, or whatever. This, and, and I learned about this. I go, my gosh. I go, if that woman is praising the Lord, I, surely I can praise the Lord. I mean, I got it pretty doggone good. And, I, and maybe, maybe, our, maybe, our, maybe, our, maybe our focus has gotten skewed or off a little bit living in the Western world. We have so many things and so much things going on that we never even take time to put our gadgets down so we can praise God. It's, it's nothing new, but sometimes we've got, we, we feel like we have to be entertained every second of the day or we get bored. Amen? And, and, and you can rectify that by doing family things outside during the summer. I took my youngest grandkids to the park. We woke up, we ate breakfast, and we went to the park. And we got done playing for an hour or two. They could, one little grandson, he said, what are we going to do now? Grandpa said, we're going to continue to pray, uh, play. And then what are we going to do? And then he came to me after that. I said, then after that, then we're going to get under a shade tree. You remember when you used to get under a shade tree when you was hot? Now kids want to go in to get some conditioned air. Maybe the problem is we've been living under condi- Maybe the problem is we've been living under conditioned air too long. And then we're going to sit under a shade tree, and then we're going to read the Bible. Then when we get done with that, we're going to go down the street to the water park, and we're going to play outside a little more. And Grandpa's going to study the Bible a little more. And they look, my two youngest ones looked at me and said, Grandpa, we don't have our swimsuits. I said, whatever you got on will do. And maybe, maybe, we have to have, maybe we have to have everything right all the time in order to, to, to have fun. I have to have this and have it. You know, I've got to have nothing to have fun. I said, whatever you got on, I'll do. And they said, well, Grandpa, we don't have a towel. Won't we get Grandma's van all wet? I said, yep. <laughs> Look at me for a second here. If the van's wet, the van's wet. They learned a lesson that day about having fun. Am I making sense to anybody? What we got to do is just praise God wherever we're at. And if all you got is a hose in your front yard, use it. Squirt one another. You can make your front yard or backyard a slip and slide if you get it wet enough. Am I helping you out yet? You just slide until it becomes mud. Oh, don't worry, parents. It'll, the grass will grow back later. All right. Do not neglect showing hospitality to strangers, for whereby, thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Come on, you guys have met them. You've seen it on the, on the shows where the car got flipped back over and somebody got dragged out from underneath a pond with the car upside down and all this mess. The only reason you made it through is because there was an angel around that just got that just guide you just past the danger zone. That was an angel there that maneuvered the car just right. And a lot of you cats are in here. Oh, I was so I was so skillful. I slid it sideways. Well, we rode it down, bro. You ride nothing down. And when you go down on a bike and you don't die, you know God's real. Amen. 
It was an angel. There was a, if you're looking for a supernatural result, you can't keep looking in the natural. Supernatural com- things come from, from a supernatural God. His name's Jehovah. And he'll do things you can't even imagine. And that's what moves God is faith in him and his power. Remember those who were in prison as though in prison with in prison with them. And those who are mistreated since you also are in the body. Just because somebody's in prison doesn't mean they can't be part of the body of Christ. The only thing is, is they got caught and you didn't. Can I say that again? They got caught and you didn't. That's the only thing that separates you and them. People get born again in prison all the time. Don't look down your nose at them. Wake up, church. Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled. You want me to jump into this? For God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Keep your life free from the love of money. Guys, there's nothing wrong with money just as long as money don't become your God. Come on, help me out. Just as long as it don't become your God. What it is is it's a bargaining tool or a bargaining chip so you can get a gallon of gas. There's a certain amount of money that you've got to give them, and you'll have to teach your children that too unless you want them to reside in your basement for the rest of their life. <laughs> or continue to change their diaper, whatever you do, coddle them along. They'll have to go out and get a thing called a J-O-B, and sometimes the J-O-B's outside and they'll get hot and sweaty, and sometimes they'll have to work with people in the public. It's called work. You work, you get paid for some, some services rendered. Don't keep paying for their insurance and their gas and everything else. Let them go out and get a job. They can put their own gas in their own tank. Well, they're going to be your tank because you'll have to get the car for them probably. Amen. Keep your life free from the love of money and be content with whatever you have. Oh, my gosh, that talked to me. Because guys got two-foot-itis. Two-foot-itis is any time that you got a 21-foot boat, Scott, and then you want to get a 23. You got a 23, you want a 25. If you got a, a motorcycle that's got 100 horse, you want it to have 125. Guys supercharge them. Be content with what you got. There's a lot of people in the world that got a lot less than you do. Who am I talking to now? Don't have to have the iPhone 7 plus 7, right? Amen. I don't know if they make it, but they probably will after they heard me preach about it. Oh, I got to have that, Dad, or I just, I can't live without it. Do you ever notice that once you end up getting these crazy phones, all you do my age is make a phone call it anyways. But I'll tell you what, i got to admit, it's a lot better than running around with the bag phone. Remember the bag phone? When mobile, they called them mobile phones back then. It was a big honking phone with a cord on it, and it went to a great big battery pack the size of a suitcase. You walk around, it was so heavy, you had to have padding around it. It cut off your circulation. But if you had one, you was cool. You dang skippy you was. Be content with whatever you had, for he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, so we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. The Lord's my helper. I will not fear. Say, I will not fear. What can man do to me? When you're born again, what can man do to you? What can he do to you? If anybody snuffs me out, the only place I'm going straight to heaven you guys will find another preacher, and I'll be dancing on streets of gold with my family members. Come on, help me out today. <laughs> Sometimes people are walking, not you guys, but other churches are walking around like Christian scaredy cats. Remember your leaders, though, who spoke the word, uh, spoke to you the word of God, consider the outcome of the way of their life and imitate their faith. You imitate their faith because they're imitating Jesus. Don't imitate people who ain't, who ain't walking in Jesus. Don't make, your, uh, don't make the person that you idolize some rock star or some 
some pro athlete or something, if they ain't following Jesus, if they're acting like a ding-dong, they're a ding-dong. And you check that with the Bible. Say, my pastor told me to check out if you're a ding-dong or not. You just look in your Bible and it'll let you know. That'll be a good guide for you. It'll be a good guidebook. Amen. I said amen. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be led away by diverse and strange teaching. For it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace and not foods, which have, been, which have benefited those devoted to, him, to them. We have an altar from those who which serve the tent have no right to eat. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the holy places by the high priest is a sacrifice for sin or burn outside the camp. They're talking about back in the Old Testament, the only way you could have your, son, your sin dealt with is by killing a, a, an animal, and then that blood would cover, say cover, cover your sin. But it didn't remove it. It just covered it until the, uh, until the Lamb of God was slain. And then it was His blood that actually removed the sin uh, that was against God, and it won't be counted against you if you're born again. But if you ain't born again, that's bad news for you. You need to get saved today. There's always got to be something done for sin. So if you're a sinner, you need a Savior. That ought to be a bumper sticker too. Um, verse 12, so Jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people through his own blood. Sanctification's a process, ma'am. Sanctification's a process, sir. We become more and more like Jesus as we submit and die to ourselves, say it with me, class, daily. Hey, if you don't want to die to yourself and you want to get up and you're still as full of pride as you were when you went to bed, you ever went to bed and trying to win an argument and you got up and you were just as mad or even madder than when you went to bed that night? Follow me then. What we do is we have folded our arms and gotten so prideful that our goal now is not to follow Jesus but follow our own righteousness. That's not what God wants to happen in your life. God wants you to submit to him and submit your foolish pride and admit you're wrong and you need a savior. And sometimes sorrow goes a long way. You know, I found out that when you start, when you're able to say sorry to yourself, you start killing off uh, arguments and things of that nature. Just you, Some of you guys need to call somebody or talk to somebody today go, you know what, in order for me to continue to praise God, I need to tell you that I'm sorry. And it may not, watch this now, it may not even be your fault. Oh, did you hear that? Somebody's head snapped back. It may not even be your fault, but if you'll go up and say you're sorry to that person, that'll kill that argument and it'll be over with. You know something? I'm sorry. I probably could have handled it better. Some of you guys are like golf clapping and going, eh. It says, therefore, let us go outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured. And uh, reproach means disgrace. He was disgraced for us. For we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. And that's the new Jerusalem. Amen. Through him, then let us continually, continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips that acknowledge his name. The fruit of our lips. So that's something that's going on inside our heart. Needs to roll off our lips and start praising God. And everything don't have to be right in your life to praise God. That's the lesson that I learned from Miss Wanda. I had no idea how that woman could continue to praise God being paralyzed from the neck down, but I learned a lesson. Being content is something that God puts inside you, not the newest gadgetry. Come on, somebody ought to shout on that. So if there's something going on in, in your heart, the, the way that you put uh, a stamp of approval or God puts a stamp of approval on it is by confessing. It's the same way you get born again. If you confess that you're a sinner and you're in need of a Savior, that activates, that activates 
supernatural faith and, and gets God to respond. And when you ask him to come into your heart, watch this. When you ask him to come into your heart, he comes into your heart and he removes that old crusty heart that you've been holding on to them things and them addictions and all that short comes in. And, and he removes that and he puts in and installs a, he installs a, a new heart. And you don't look at people. You know what I found out about that I learned from a four-year-old granddaughter and a seven-year-old grandson? We went to the park and all different colors of people from all different neighborhoods were all under the same sprinklers and fountains getting wet and nobody had any arguments and nobody had any indecisions and nobody had any fights. They were all just people. Well, hold on now. How can that be? Because they had one goal in mind. It was to get wet and have fun. And down there, nobody was judging anybody, and nobody was saying, see, I think sometimes, not you guys at this church or anything, but I mean, sometimes we start judging people by the way that they look or by the way that they, and let me tell you something, you're going to wear yourself out trying to make everybody look like you. Or, or dressing the way you dress, or maybe they don't have what you have or whatever. It don't matter what, what we all have, just as long as we have Jesus. We're, our common bond is the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, I hadn't even started preaching yet. So I, what, what brings the songs up in your heart that you, can, that you can look at people? You just ask God, let me look at people the way you do. What a novel idea. I want to look at people the way, and I'll tell you what, the world will, will want you to fire up on that person. They'll want you to fire. Oh, you ought to rip on him. Everybody's ripping on him on Facebook. You have no idea what she did last night. You don't need to join in on that nasty conversation. Maybe that girl needs prayer. Moms, you didn't hear me. I said, maybe, that, maybe your daughter needs prayer. They don't need anybody else climbing on and slamming her or him on Facebook. Bring them to church so they can pray for her. Bring her to church where she could be loved. Bring her to the church where she could be accepted. Bring her to church where she learn about Jesus. Bring her to church where she could end up getting saved and be part of the community of Christ. Amen. Don't shame her out. Welcome her in. Boy, wouldn't that make the devil mad? You guys start inviting people from the world into church. Maybe that's what we need to do. Turn with me into Acts 16, and then everybody rise up. And I'll ask the praise team to come forward, and we'll start praying and playing at the same time. So the book of Acts, I had somebody ask me about the, you, you, most churches have left the book of Acts out because they start talking about the Holy Ghost, and they have to explain what's going on in it. The, the, the Bible as a whole is a living, breathing organism or document, however you want to look at it. I just, I, I just have to look at it that when, when I read the Bible, I get a little smarter. I have to believe that. Otherwise, we wouldn't read it. God wants us to indulge in the Bible. He wants us to learn from the Bible, and then we, then we learn from the book of Acts how church is really supposed to go. People love one another. They didn't all look the same. People were, were baptized in the Holy Ghost. They were casting out devils. They were speaking in new tongues, and they're doing all these supernatural things. What would happen if the church got off in that? The love would abound all over the place and we would stop all the wars and the rumors of wars and all these things and people would end up getting saved everywhere. But here's the deal. It won't happen in the natural. It has to happen in the supernatural. And somebody stopped me before I walked out of church the other night. They go, Pastor, do you really believe in, in the indwelling and the baptism of the Holy Ghost, do you really believe that these people were doing this kind of stuff? Yes, they're doing that kind of stuff. Yes, I believe in it. Well, God's not a liar. i never seen anywhere in any text, anywhere, no one has ever shown me that God quit all this stuff. There's denominations out there go, oh, that's an apostolic gift, or that was, a, that was a gift of old. What does old mean? 
The people think that I'm old, it don't mean I'm dead. Is anybody listening to this message today? We got little boxes for everybody that have certain color hair, certain color skin. You go here, go here. No, 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 no. That ain't the way, that ain't the way church works. The church is a, the church is a powerful it's a, it's a, it's a powerful force here on planet earth. It's the it's the it's the institution that has kept the United States from sliding into the abyss. Just a few remnant churches around through the country. I said it all the time. I believe it with all my heart. So here it is. Here's the goods. About midnight, 1625 in Acts, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Put yourself and close your eyes. In the worst place you've ever been. And I could read everybody's mail here today. Oh, you've all been in a bad place somewhere in your mind. Maybe you was in your mind doing something. Hotel. Crack house. Dope house. Jail. Car. Let's get down to it. The Apostle Paul and Silas praying and singing hymns to God. And I'm talking to the, the prodigal today who needs to come home. Somebody that you raised up in the church that went away. Right now there's something supernatural activating the atmosphere that's going to start bringing these kids back home. And right now, something might happen to be activated where they just start, and Terry starts singing to God right now. They'll have to look at their situation around them. And maybe like the prodigal son, maybe they're in the hog pen, eating pods with the hogs. They go, what am I doing here? Anybody ever have that recollection? What am I doing here? That's what the Apostle Paul said. But there was something that happened that night in that prison cell. It's time to come home, people. It's time to come back to the Lord. The Apostle Paul, something, the Holy Ghost must have touched him, and he said, hey, you remember that day on the Damascus Road when you gave your life to Jesus? I never left you, son. Start singing to me. Oh, well, what a foolish thing to do when you're in prison or when you're in addiction. Start singing to God. Why should you start singing to God? Because it runs the devil back to hell where he belongs. That's why you do it. Hey, get back where you belong, old devil, back to hell. He can't be in the presence of holiness. He started singing. Him and his buddy Silas. I can just see it now. They were singing because they believed in the power of the Holy Spirit. They were singing because they seen it happen at they had the power and the anointing to cast out devils. And all of a sudden, there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bonds were unfastened. This is a spiritual and physical picture for you that have been in, in, in handcuffs. By your religion and, and indoctrinated by bad theology. You got locked up.
Everyone's bonds were unfastened. The jailer woke up and saw that the prison doors were open. He drew a sword and it was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried with a loud voice, Don't harm yourself. We're all here. Maybe that's what we need to say today. Don't harm yourself. We're all here. Everybody have Bibles here. We're here for you. Don't harm yourself. Don't go anywhere. We're all here. And then all of a sudden, that jailer heard that voice. Listen to what he said. He called for the lights, trembling with fear. He fell down with Paul and Silas, and then he brought him out. He said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? What a question. There was nothing in there about, can I join your church? What denomination are you? He says, what must I do to get what you got? You can't get it on the internet, folks. You can't get it from the six-pack store. You can only get saved, Terry, through the blood of Jesus Christ. Don't let anybody fool you. You're running around here and there and everywhere trying to find peace. And it only comes through Jesus Christ. And you need to receive him today. Can I get a witness in the house of the Lord today? You got to have him. You got to have him. You can hang your hat on that. Outside the love of Jesus, friends, I have nothing for you. So let me ask you the question, Aunt Terry. Have you accepted the free gift of salvation that only comes from Jesus Christ? Nothing else will do. It's like, it's like a MasterCard. Don't leave home without it. Oh, well, I'll start praising him, God, a pastor. I'll start praising him one day when we get we you know don't get busy and we don't have softball and baseball and this ball, that ball, and every ball. Everybody's busy in the summer. I told you that acronym for busy is being under Satan's yoke. Oh, we got big plans on Sunday. Well, here's the deal. Start your plans at church and then go get busy when you leave here. Don't All right, let's pray. Lord, you got a good deal going here, man. You paid the price, I get the benefit. What'd you see in me, Lord? I said, God, what'd you see in me? What'd you see in me way back in the year of 2000 that was worth dying for? An old, wretched, crusty heart, foul mouth, bigot, hellion. Thank you, Jesus. With every fiber of my being, Lord, I love you. And I'm not ashamed of you a lick. Lord, if there's someone here today who doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, my prayer is that they come with a bended knee and receive the free gift that only you offer. Let it be known on this day, Lord God, that Jesus reigns supreme at Have Bible Will Travel. He's the author and finisher for our faith. And upon his word and his promises is what we stand on. And for all the saints who are gathered here today, who need to get something right before they partake in the Lord's Supper, they would do that too. So let's do inventory, and let's praise the Lord today. And let's do it with joy, in Jesus' name, amen. Let's applaud the Lord one more time in His house. Hey!